All right, we are back to talk about Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. We are on season one. We are episode four. And in my opinion, it is starting to get lit. Oh, yeah. This was a good episode. Yeah. Whitney. Girl. No, we've been clocking her. her. That's right. We have been clocking her for being petty and pious, sanctimonious. Yeah. But like in this episode... Demi got her. Demi and Taylor a little bit. But Demi. Mainly Demi. Demi yeah. really got Demi, her. Demi, I'm sorry. Demi, sorry. I loved it. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. Yes. So we start the episode off with the girls heading to Park City, Utah or something for Macy's birthday. Yeah. They're in two separate cars. I don't know. I don't remember who went with who. Taylor's group ended up getting there first. And this is where she learns from some of the other girls that they have problems with Whitney. And so that's where like the first seed is planted. She's like, oh, other people don't like Whitney too. Other people think Whitney's a bitch too. That's great to know. So then the other girls show up. Whitney buys them all matching sweatsuits cringe. <laughs> it's all just so they can create a TikTok later. Right. Which they do end up doing on the show i would totally wear those sweats though i, don't think I mean they cute. look like comfy sweats yeah but they're just cringe you know okay like the group is just cringe and tiktok is cringe okay but anyway so <laughs> sorry <laughs> got it <laughs> they bring they have their matching sweatsuits and then jen kind of opens up to jesse i think about being the breadwinner with her and zach because zach's a deadbeat gambler poker mm. addict which I know we're going to get into later in this but season. But I mean, I know we addressed this a little bit last week, but like the mandacity to be talking to Jen in mm -hmm. any kind of way as if you are the head of the household when you make no money. None. You are a literal failure. Broke ass. You look like Gary Busey <laughs> and or a crackhead. <laughs> You're an evil person. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. a misogynistic asshole. Mm -hmm. And you bring nothing to the table. Literally ask yourself, what do I bring to the table with this uh, veritable goddess of a woman? You bring nothing. Let me answer Literally that for nothing. you. Thank you for asking. <laughs> you bring nothing. You're not Literally even nothing. good to look at. And no. no offense. No offense. You were just reaming me out for body shaming Kim Plath. And I'm not sorry. No. I, I, mean, I want to be This so guy is translucent. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I should be better. I'm going to try harder with no, that. You won't. But not if it's a man. No. <laughs> Give a fuck. I Double mean, not, standard. Not if it's a misogynistic piece of shit like Zach Affleck. Yeah. I will get in that ass. <laughs> fuck this guy. Yeah. I mean, I can't wait till we get to his gambling addict shit. Like the next episode, I know I'm jumping ahead, but in the preview when we're talking about yeah. Las Vegas and he's at poker and he's and gambling he's like, all And he's money. yelling at her because yes. I think they go to some strip club or something. Yeah. And she gets really scared because she knows he's, because he's insecure because you know he's a fucking needle dick. Yep. You know he's, oh, he's a fucking micro penis. Mm, pamper tiny. baby. Yep. Pamper boy. Pamper, pamper peen. penis. Yep. So he cannot fathom mm -mm. a night. Where she's at the Chippendales or the Thunder from Down Under. <laughs> and she sees that there's a world that exists where penises are larger than two inches. Oh, yeah. And oh, my God, does that threaten his masculinity? Oh, yeah, 100%. God, I hate him. And I don't even, I mean, he's only been in one scene. I, I know. hate him. I hate him, too. But uh, from the clips I've seen, I'm like, he's such a piece of shit. But it's like wild because Jen is like this good Mormon. She like actually wears the undergarments, whereas all these other hoes aren't. <laughs> so she's wearing the undergarments. I wonder if Zach's wearing his undergarments. Probably not. Probably not because it's a man. She world. did forget her garments though she for the Park City, Utah. Naughty girl. Adventure. Wow. Bad Mormon. Bad. But she does talk about that. And we get into that more when Demi brings out this lovely group activity, Truth Box, because this is such a good idea with these fake assholes to bring out a mm -hmm. truth box and have them all write anonymous mm -hmm. truth questions or truth confessions or something. And then the girls read them out. Which is so good. We have dumb questions like, you know, who would you go lesbian for? Right. Who would you, whose husband would you fuck? And then Whitney gets asked, why are you so jealous of Taylor? And Whitney's like, oh. is it because of all the clout she got when this swinger scandal came out? Oh my God. Who asked that? I wonder. Of somebody who's a genius. Uh, probably to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Whitney skirts around it. And she's like, well, I'm not jealous of her. Of course not. 
I was just upset that she got forgiven for her swinger stuff, but people are still mad at me for twerking in front of my dying kid who had RSV. Right. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Oh my God. And then she defends the RSV video Mm -hmm. too because it was such a terrible time and she was trying to be positive and happy twerking in front of her dead kid. Well, but later, I mean, and we should say it now because it makes sense that later Demi says that they did ketamine one time, her and yeah. Whitney, and I guess doing ketamine like causes this like Opens soul excavation yeah. and start looking at your psychology. Yeah. And this is where Whitney actually admitted that she posted that twerking video with her dying baby for clout and for clicks and for money. Yep. But Whitney will deny that to this day. Well, yeah. And in the circle, in the truth circle, she's like, no, I mean... He was getting better and I was in a just joyous moment and I wanted to dance. No, you didn't. Girl. You wanted to exploit your baby. Well, and that's what's like so crazy. That just shows how crazy Whitney is because I'm like, this wasn't an appropriate video. Like you shouldn't have been twerking in front of your dying kid with an RSV. <laughs> Whereas Taylor owned up to the rumors. Like she owned up to the fact that, yeah, I was swinging, I'm cheating on my husband. Like I'm, I did a bad thing. Like she came out and was open and honest about it. But Whitney can't be honest about her RSV video. She can't be honest about her gay husband. She can't be honest about shit. Right. So fuck Whitney. And then Demi gets asked about calling Jen too Mormon. Mm -hmm. And they kind of have a little little tiff about it because Demi's like, you just say it all the time. Like you're acting like you're a good Mormon. Like shut the fuck up. You're constantly talking about your garments and everything. And it's like, it's a bit much. Yep. But then she's like, and you would have only heard that I said that from one person. And that's Whitney. That's Whitney. Right. And then Jen claps back and is like, well, but what about the time that you called Taylor white trash? Yeah. (laughs) So then it just gets escalated from here. And then Taylor calls out Demi for changing in front of Dakota. Because Dakota was scandalized by it, which I'm just like, this is so stupid. Well, but I mean, it was a fair point because Demi was trying to justify her calling Taylor white trash by saying that, well, you are trashy, though, because you had this (laughs) whole swinger scandal. And furthermore, we like went to a party and we thought we were just going to hang out. But like you were kissing my husband on the top of his head. Yeah. And it was just a weird swinging vibe. And I had no idea. And that's trashy. It's objectively trashy. So that's why I said that I should not have said that. To other people. Yeah. Should have had a convo with you. It didn't do that. But she admits it. And then Taylor says, well, do you think it's trashy that you walked out in front of Dakota with just a bra on? Which is hypocritical. Uh, Sure. Yeah. It's hypocritical. Yeah. So I liked how Taylor did that. I did too. I thought I liked their little quips back and forth. But I did like how Demi was owning up to what she said. Like she wasn't trying to skirt around shit like Whitney was. Mm -hmm. Demi was just like, yeah, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Like, and was actually apologizing and whatever. So after this whole truth box thing, Demi, Demi's like, that was a bad idea. I feel obliterated by that, which she was a little bit. And then Whitney got mad at Macy for not defending her right. during all of it, which was so fucked up. Right. Whitney is so toxic. Yeah. And then it's the next day they're filming their dumb TikTok and their matching sweatsuits. And Taylor takes Whitney aside and is like, I want to talk to you. I want to have a private conversation with you. And basically is like, why don't you like me? Mm -hmm. Or something like that. And Whitney's like, what? Like, I just didn't go to your baby shower because I don't think we're like good friends. Right. And so Whitney's trying to play it off like, well, I don't actually have friend-like feelings for you. It's not a big deal. It doesn't have to be dramatic. And Taylor is saying, well, but I thought we were friends like and I did check in on you when you were having your grinder scandal with your gay husband (laughs) and I do care about you so like when did this change and when he's like I mean I don't know it just did she was very dismissive of Taylor Uh I thought Taylor in that moment in that argument it wasn't even an argument I thought she was being very conciliatory I thought she was like trying to find out what the problem is so she could fix it I think she was being very humble and like Whitney was just sitting there as if she were on a throne honey yeah and like putting her scepter down and saying no I don't want to be your friend and I was just like ew you are the worst kind of woman you've never been checked by somebody else honey it just takes one time girl and I'm the woman to do it facts I'm the woman to do it facts gonna get checked and so actually the woman to do it is to me because everybody's listening to the conversation downstairs with Whitney and Taylor and they can hear how Taylor is trying and how much of a bitch Whitney is being yep 
And so they're talking about it downstairs. And Demi is saying things like, I mean, it's just not okay. Mm-mm. Like, why are you talking to, and you talk to everybody else about her, but now you have this moment to actually hash it out with Taylor and you're not doing that. It's so fucked up. And so Demi gets up, takes her happy ass upstairs and barges in on the conversation, which I love. Oh my God, queen shit. It was so good because she's talking mad shit about Whitney downstairs and all the girls are agreeing with her. And even Michaela, who's like BFFs with Whitney, it's so wild. She goes up there and she's like confronting Whitney about like, why didn't you go to the baby shower? Like Taylor thought you guys were friends. Like, why are you saying all this bullshit to Jen? And then Jen's spewing it out to everybody else. Like, what are you doing? And Whitney is defending it every time. Like, she's like, well, I would tell Jen all this stuff again. Like, I, I don't think I did anything wrong. Yeah. And I just told Taylor to her face. So what's the problem? Yeah. I just told her that I don't like her right here. And Demi's like, well, then you're a shitty friend. Yeah. And like, you're a <laughs> shitty person for doing that. Like, you're telling all uh, these other people all this crazy shit about Taylor. But like, you won't say it to her face. Yeah. That's shitty. That is hashtag shitty. And Whitney can't handle it. Oh, my God. Immediately starts crying. In the face of confrontation yeah. and nothing but facts, she starts crying. Her tears robin brown tears and then she's like i gotta go i can't stay in this conversation oh okay so you can spread gossip Mm -hmm. and derision among all these women and never say a word to taylor and just ice her out and your mean girl shit but like the moment you're confronted by somebody who's also taking ownership for the shit that she did yep which demi has done Mm -hmm. like you're just like gonna cry and run off and play the victim and then you have all of your goons downstairs yeah, your coming minions. to you and they're like oh my god your feelings are totally valid like it's totally okay and Whitney's like I'm such a pussy and I'm like yelling at my tv yeah you are mm-hmm. <laughs> a little bit because you're fucking running away mm-hmm. from confrontation you can't just own up to spreading bullshit around the group and then you're acting all fucking clueless so she's crying right. and then later that day I think they go out to dinner no 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 well then the girls confront her while she's crying with her oh, minions yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Demi and Jesse and Taylor come into the room that she's run off into right, right. where Jen and Macy are trying to comfort her and these girls come in to continue to have the conversation and continue to basically call her out on her bullshit so she continues to cry yep and it's actually taylor who's like you know i totally understand how you could have felt the way that you did and like is trying to extend an olive branch to her and like to validate her a little bit in this moment which is ironic because you've been dragging her to filth in this entire friend group and you can't wait to unseat her as the queen of mom talk for sure but she's the one showing up to try to help you Oh, yeah. But Whitney doesn't want any of it because Whitney is also trying to uproot her and mm-hmm. try to be the queen of mom talk. Like even in their stupid video that they recorded, like Whitney's at the front and center. Mm-hmm. She's in she's like in the focus. So she's trying to be yes. the head of everything, which is funny because now she's not a part of mom talk anymore. Right. But I mean, she's coming back for season two because she can't miss being on this super popular program yeah yeah even though she's hated and she's the villain oh for sure so she's gonna come back next season trying to rebrand herself and present herself in a different way yep definitely Mm -hmm. and then is it that night yeah that they go to dinner they get dressed and again whitney is still fucking crying Mm -hmm. at the dinner table with this this is supposed to be macy's birthday supposed to be celebration all the other girls are sucking it up Mm -hmm. faking it trying to be nice trying to be there for macy but Whitney over there with her dumb hair <laughs> and her dumb dress. What oh are you God. wearing? What are you wearing a Mormon wearing? garment? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you literally what wearing is now? That? Yeah, it's so ugly. Mm-hmm. She's got weird fucking outfits. Mm-hmm. Like, she wears a lot of weird stuff. But whatever. I won't shame her for her outfit She's choices. She's got gorgeous skin. I mean, it is very sure. white, but it's like glass. <laughs> it's like glass. There's not a blemish on her skin. I want her skincare it's routine. It's really beautiful. It's probably that Korean skincare, honey. Probably like ten steps and stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. we need that. We do need it. We should crowdsource that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Whitney gets up from the table to go to the bathroom. She comes back with a cake and toilet paper on her shoe. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> Which was really good. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, tries to be like, yeah, happy birthday. We love you, Macy, whatever. And then in her talking head, when he's like, I stand by what I did. Yeah. <laughs> totally unrepentant. I don't think I did anything mm-hmm. wrong. Like, girl, you're whack. Yeah. You're crazy. She has an inflated idea of her importance in the world. And I think it probably shocked her when the season finally came out and 
Taylor was the primary person and mm. Taylor was the one that was centered because I think she fully believed that it was going to be her. Oh, But she maybe. couldn't carry it. And yeah. also the other girls had a mutiny and didn't want her, didn't want any of her shit. And we see in the future episodes that Macy is going to start to realize just who Whitney is. Everybody's yes. going to get a glimpse of what she's been doing behind the scenes. I love I can't to wait. See it. I so wanted to binge the rest of it because I'm just doing it week by week because you're making me. Well, maybe we should double up on the last uh, yeah, few episodes. I would like to. Okay. Are you okay to do that? Yeah, I can do it. Yeah. So next time we come back, we'll cover two episodes because I think there's only four more. Yeah. So we might as well just yeah, let's. I want to watch out. them. Yeah. I'm so entertained. Me too. Well, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review. Ah! It really helps us grow the pod. We're trying to get famous out here. Absolutely. We will be back next week to talk more triggering Cody Brown and Ugh. Sister Wives. And also we're going to come back, I guess, with two episodes of Mom Talk. And yeah. I wonder what other shows are coming up because I think that means we'll only have Mom Talk through October. And then we, what are we gonna do? have a gaping hole. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Oh my God. Like Cody's boo boo after <laughs> Robin Pegg's him. Oh my I'm God. Flapping in gaping, the wind. Yeah, a gaping hole in the schedule. <laughs> like, what's coming up in November on the television? I don't know. I don't watch live TV, but oh. I need Last Resort to come in. Oh girl. my God. I've been waiting for oh that. Oh my God. I need that. I so actually bad. really loved that last Me year. Me too. That was so good. I'd love to cover it again. Oh my God. Let us know what you guys are thinking and what you guys want us to cover on the general pod. We cover a whole bunch of stuff on the Patreon. Yeah. We're doing Smothered. We did Couples Therapy. Love After Lockup. Love After Lockup. A lot of stuff over there. Um, But we'll be back next week. Until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.